podcast. It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. We've missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like, the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling, like you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed a bit straight and what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight down the tree. All we get is big red eyes. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed, and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. You are listening to Believe, Paranormal and UFO Radio. My name is Cade Moyer, and thanks for tuning in. If you've had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au. Or you can message me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash believe UFO Radio. If you enjoy this episode, there are a few things you can do to help the show. Firstly, you can go to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating and review. Or you can share the show around social media with your friends and family, and that will help us grow. Tonight I'm joined by Jackie, and a lot of you will probably know Jackie's story. She was on basically international news with what happened with her. She had a family of Yowies and an unknown creature on a property that she lived on in the Atherton Tablelands. Jackie, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on. I mean, you, your encounter is pretty much the the hot topic of the um the the crypto zoology world at the moment do you mind telling us exactly all about it yes i can do that i've been wanting to tell my story so um well what happened was i went to the property out in Taz valley um i thought it was 140 acres but i found out it's actually 172 acres and um there's two houses on the property so there's an old cottage that's over 100 years old. That's um, half on stilt on, on the slope of a hill. And it's 500 metres within the property. And there's a second house on the other side, which is about 500 metres from the other home. And um, the owners had actually, uh, the new owners had just bought it and um, was starting to fix up the property and rented it out straight away to me and my kids. So we moved there, um, I think it was on the 4th of September, 2015. And um, yeah, well, a few things happened. I think within the first few days, I built a little vegetable garden in the back um, because I'm right into my self-sufficiency and stuff like that. And um, the landlord had just put down some new gravel on the driveway. Not on my driveway, but on his huge long driveway that went to the other home. And um, it was, in, yeah, a few nights later, I I heard rocks getting thrown on the roof. And at first I thought maybe it was the birds in the tree, because there was a, a, quite a large tree next to the home. And the branches went over the roof, you see. So I thought maybe it was the birds dropping nuts or seeds or something like that. But it kept happening, and it actually sounded like the rock gang fallen. So it wasn't until the next morning I went out there to try and look for these nuts or seeds or whatever was thrown on the roof, and I saw some of the gravel from the driveway in the new little veggie garden I made at the back of the house. So I picked them up, and I showed the um, landlord, because he used to come around many times during the day, you know, if, because it was um, like a large farm. He had all the cattle surrounding the home. And um, we were a bit confused about what was getting, you know, why there was rocks in the garden. So, um, but anyway, I will describe a little bit about the house. The, the old cottage that was um, partly on the hill that had built up the front in a um, stairs with a veranda and at the back, the, the arc end of the house actually landed, you know, on the slope. So when you walked out the back door, it was about six or seven metres to the bathroom. So had, that's how old the house was. So there was an outside bathroom, a shower, and a little laundry area. And also there was a wall on one side that was blocking the wind coming through from the back door 
say, you know, you could walk to the bathroom. But the rest on the right-hand side was all open. So you could pretty much park your car nearly to the back door of the house. So um, the next thing we started to hear was someone walk around the property. And my oldest son, he's, he was 16 at the time, um, he said, Mom, you know, I can hear someone walking around. And I said, well, actually, yeah, I've been listening to it. I just didn't want to say anything. To scare, you know, to scare him, you know. And um, so I was just stay up quite late and listen to someone walking around. And you could just, you can definitely tell it was someone walking on the driveway, um, walking through the cattle field, uh, which was about a good eight, nine meters from my back door. That's how close the paddock was. And the fence went wrapped around the back of the house. So I thought that was a bit odd. I mean, someone to be walking through the paddock late at night. And um, so I ended up telling the landlord, and I said, look, I think someone's walking around the house. And he said, look, can you ring the police? And they're not really my favorite people to ring. So I avoided it. <laughs> and um, anyway, every time he come around, he'd say, hey, look, did you know, have you heard anything? And I said, yeah, I can still hear someone. He goes, please ring them. So I ended up doing that. And um, the police said, look, they can do a drive-by and I have a look. And I said, well, that's not going to do much, mate, because you can just lay down in the, in the long grass. So um, anyone can hide. So there's no use. And I said, look, I'm going to sit on this veranda and I'm going to wait. And I will ring you when I catch this guy because I'm actually going to break his leg. And that's exactly what I said to the police officer on the phone. So I went down to the shed. We had an old, really old um, shed uh, a few minutes away. And there was a lot of old pieces of wood. So I found a large piece of wood that had a big screw straight through it. And I thought, right, that, that will do. So I just sit on the veranda late at night. Because sometimes we could actually hear someone walking up the stairs when we're in bed and walking on the veranda. So um, I sit up there until about two in the morning, and to a point I had a large outdoor, um, outdoor setting, and I even pushed the chairs over so it made a bit of a wall so I could crouch down <laughs> and um, just wait for this person to come up the front stairs. But nothing ever happened. So as soon as I'd go to bed, then you'd hear someone walking up the veranda again. But every time I tried to get out of bed, the house was that old that the floor would creak really loudly. So as soon as I get up, you could hear it creaking, and then whatever was on the veranda, whoever it was, would quickly walk off. So anyway, um, what happened was oh, that went on for quite a while. That actually went on for about nine months. Oh, really? Yeah. And um, we had other things happening in between that time. I'm just got to bring jotted down here. And um, so on one occasion, uh, that's when my, um, oh, my son ended up moving to Cairns to go to TAFE. And on the same day, I ended up um, getting my niece to come and live with me. And she was 14 at the time. So I had my niece and I had my had my eight-year-old son with me too. So, um, and then other events started to happen. So um, one night, she went outside to go to the toilet and she actually woke me up because she accidentally slammed the back door. And um, I got up and I said, hey, what are you doing slamming the door? And she ran back inside and was really, really scared. She said something grabbed around the leg, something hairy. Something grabbed her. And... Uh, Something grabbed her around the leg. It actually wrapped its arm right around her leg. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And um, it was pitch black. So she ran inside and she was panicking. I said, oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, anyway, she just went to bed. And then another time she said to me that, because um, we used to have our windows open in our bedroom. And the windows were so big, you could just jump through them quite easily. And she saw something squatting in her bedroom in the corner. And I said, oh, okay, that's a bit strange. I said, all right, we'll start showing the windows. So, um, but the windows never locked. So I went down the shed again and found some sticks and placed them all behind the windows. And we had no curtains in the house because it was such an open home. But, uh, the only time I had the curtain was in the grand sliding door. So, um, so that happened. Um, what else was there? 
at one time, um, because our bedroom, because the house is so old, the old rompus room was my bedroom. So we have a door from, you know, from our bedroom from the inside, but also there's those old shutter doors that used to be on the outside to the veranda. So two bedrooms had two doors, one to access the um, veranda and one for inside. Um, I asked the landlord to um, get a lock because my one didn't open. I kept hearing someone on the veranda. So he came and screwed and bolted them down. He also um, got a security light for me. It was a solar one and that night it never worked. Never ever worked after that. So that was that. Um, then she, um, that night we actually heard someone come out the veranda again and she saw a silhouette standing at the, at her bedroom door, which was on the veranda. She was that terrified that she could even yell out to me. So she told me in the morning. And I said, what the hell's going on? Is this the same night that she saw the, the, the creature or the person squatting in that room? No, that was another night. So this is a repeat no. occurrence. Yeah, yes. And um, so I ended up getting some flour, put it on the veranda right in front of the steps. So I thought, well, you know, I need to see, you know, I need some footprints, I need something. You know, to see if it's a male, I thought it's all, you know, because we actually thought someone was walking around the house. And um, anyway, so, um, yeah, she's, she's quite upset about that. And um, and then I used to go to Aston and go shopping. And um, when I come home, the door was open. And this was early in the morning. And I thought, well, that's strange. Maybe I just didn't shut the door. And um, so I went shopping again and the door was open again. And this time I made sure it was shut. And nothing was touched. Nothing was moved. And I thought, oh, something's not right here. So I started to use the key. And which believe that. The key to the door was that old. It was one of those big old ancient keys, like the original key to this old cottage. So anyway, so I ended up locking the door. I didn't think I needed to lock it, especially living on a farm. But um, I ended up doing that. So, you know, the doors were never opened after that. Um, what else was there? Oh, and also um, because, you know, the landlord was a bit, a bit concerned, he jumped on his four-wheeler and looked in the backyard. Um, I had a huge hill at the back of the house, and that was about a good 800 metres to, like, a lake down the back. And um, he said he found a track. And I said, look, you know, this person is coming late at night. I said, he's not going to walk the same track. Any animals do. And he found the track all the way from down the hill all the way up to the back of the water tank. So I had a water tank up the back of the house and then I had two main rainwater tanks next to the house, right at, at the back of the um, bathroom. So I thought that was a bit strange. He even offered to um, tie up two of his rock wheelers at the front of the veranda. But um, I said, look, are they okay with the kids around? And he said, no. And I said, well, I prefer them not to be there. And um, so um, we started hearing things moving underneath the house and um, like scrambling. And I thought, hey, something's going on. I thought, well, if someone's walking around the house, what are they doing underneath the house, you know? So I thought that was a bit odd. How much room was there underneath um, the house? Yeah, because um, the house was on, it had stilts on the, at the front. And then the back end of the house sat on the top of the hill. Okay, so it was almost so it was like a split right. level. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, the, the house. It was a, yeah, a single story house built on a on a slant. And you could so hear the other end of the house under there. Yeah, yeah, and we had a lot of rats coming in and in the home. Like they would get in through the walls, and so I ended up putting rat bait everywhere. So I thought maybe there was an animal under there, or I don't know what what it was but at that time, but something was trying to, I don't know, doing something under there at the time, but I found out later on. But Were these noises mostly happening under the 
the under your niece's bedroom? No, but most of the noise was someone actually walking around the house all the time in different areas of the home. Okay. And um, I didn't have a torch at that stage. I only had a torch from my mobile phone. So, um, and I finally ended up buying a security torch that had a bat on the end. You know, those big, long metal ones because I was going to get this person, eh? Hey? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, anyway. So, um, oh, one time, actually, just before, sorry, I skipped a bit, um, just before my son left, my older son, he went to the bathroom and he heard a loud demonic growl. And just next to the bathroom was like a um, part of an old shed door. So it looked like the outside of the house where the bathroom was attached. Like there was a, like a, it used to be, must have been an old shed and they've just cut three quarters of it off. You know what I mean? So there's still just one little door next to the bathroom that just hung out outside. And it hit that. And he ran inside and he goes, Mom, something's out there. And I said, oh, okay. And I grew up in the Daintree. I grew up in Cal Bay. And, um, and I thought, oh, well, maybe it's a feral cat or something like that. So, and then I went to the bathroom um, not long after that. And that's when it hit the side of that shed door very, very hard. And um, I actually continued to run into the bathroom and shut the door. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I've got to make an attempt to run back inside. Because, and so I thought, whatever this is, this is not a feral cat because I actually got to hear it. And it hit that side of that shed door with a lot of force. And it was upset. So I thought, oh, I don't want to get attacked by this thing. That sounds terrifying, Jackie. Yeah, I got the guts to run in <laughs> and shut the door and um, I said to my son, yeah, well, I actually just heard it too. And um, anyway, so after that, things started to happen in the home. Um, it started to, all of a sudden, it just started to hammer down really hard with rain. And you know when it just comes out of nowhere? Yeah. And it was so loud. And I thought, oh, wow, it's raining. And, um, and I was actually outside having a cigarette. And I thought, oh, that's strange. You know, I didn't see any rain. So I quickly ran inside and I shut my bedroom door. I mean, not door, sorry, my window. And, um, and I thought, oh, hang on, there's no rain there. So I went out to the front veranda. You could actually hear it dripping from the gutters, but there was no rain. At all. Um, so I went back out the back and I went outside and there was no rain. But it was still, apparently you can hear it pissing down with rain. And I thought, nah, something's not right here. So my mother ended up coming around and I said, look, mum, something's not right here. And she goes, oh, what do you mean, aliens? <laughs> and I said, well, not the ones you think, mum. Because she's, you know, thinks all the aliens are grey, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch too much TV. <clears throat> and I said, I think whatever's here is not from here because other things are happening. And, um, you know, it rained, but there was no rain, Mum. And um, anyway, so um, what else happened there? Oh, and then... Um, we started to, you know, when we would go to the bathroom and go back into the home, we started to see on the the, the beginning of the cow paddock there was, you know, there was a bit of long grass. And I started to see this, like, silhouette of someone squatting just on dark. So it was a little hard to focus because it was nearly on dark. And um, I thought, well, that's strange. But you couldn't see a smooth outline of the figure. It was blurry, like I had a dark dense energy around it. But I thought it was just me out of focus and it was dark, but, was, but it also looked like it was getting, trying to get itself camouflaged within the dark shade of the, high, of the long grass. And so I just dismissed it. Anyway, a little while later, money said, I think there's someone squatting in the yard. And I said, oh, you saw that too. And she goes, yeah. She goes, but it's a little hard to sort of 
work out what it is. It looks like someone's squatting. And I said, well, that's exactly what I saw. So then I saw it again. So I actually walked up to it. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> and it was nearly on dark. And that place is how they can light up quite brightly at night. And um, so I walked up to it. And I was about four minutes away. And I went over and I was looking at it. And I saw it. It had dark, really black, hollow eyes. It was actually a black figure, but with a dark, dense energy around it. It was squatting. It had a um, athletic body. Like it's, you could see the muscle or the shape in its arms, and its eyes were very hollow and black. It was blacker than its actual now um, because it's figure, you know, because it was black. And I could see part of its mouth. That was also black. And I went, oh, shit. I ran inside. And I said, no, nah, something's not right here, Laura. Right, you know, just don't go outside anymore. We'll just lock up pretty much on you know, dark. What was going through your mind when you saw this creature? Well, I, I've seen things back in my past. And I actually thought it was some type of entity. And, um, but I thought it was strange for my niece to see it too, you know. And... Um, so I, uh, yeah, maybe, and then I thought, well, maybe she just she can start to see things like that as well. So I just thought, oh, I'll just leave it. But um, um, so what happened after that is, oh, that's right. And and um, I end up going on a, this date, and he came around, and I was telling a little bit about the place, and um, he wanted to set up a tent in the backyard in the bathroom. And bring his camera. And I said, okay, you can do that. I said, but, you know, I hear you yelling and screaming. I'm going to keep this door locked. So anyway, camped in the backyard. Nothing happened. Like, you didn't hear anything and that. And then, so he kept coming around a couple of times. And then he turned up once. And I was telling him about this um, strange rain phenomenon that happened. Yeah, yeah. And um, he rocked up at night. And, um... Yeah, and he brought his camera and stuff, and he tried to film um, in the kitchen because I had a, I ended up putting out, out a um, security light in the tree and stuff like that to try and, you know, capture whatever is going on around the house. Um, and then what happened was um, I heard someone walking through the backyard, walking through the grass again, and I actually had bought that security torch, so I thought, oh, now's my time. So I quickly grabbed it and I went outside and I shone it into the paddock, which, you know, not that far from the house. And um, I could hear someone actually walking through the long grass. And the next thing I saw, we had this one small tree in the paddock. And there's this, looked like the size of a chimpanzee. And it was black and hairy. And... Its back was facing me, and I yelled out to Laura. I said, quick, come out here, have a look at this. So she runs out, and we're just standing at the back door, and, and this is a pretty bright torch, so I've got it right on it. And she goes, what's that? It's a possum. And I said, nah, possums have tails, <laughs> you know. And um, its head turned. And when it did, its head nearly turned right around. And it had glowing white eyes. But I thought it was just a reflection of the torch. But it had an oblong shaped head. It was covered in black hair all over. You couldn't see its mouth, nose or anything like that. But it did look like a chimpanzee from behind. It even had that, you know, area in the back of the bum area where, you know, there wasn't as much hair. Just like a monkey would. And um, it was hanging in the tree. And we're just staring at it. And the next thing I saw was two um, glowing white eyes, about nine foot high, just at the back of that tree in the paddock. And I thought, Is that another set of eyes? Yes. And this one was nine foot high. It was huge. But he was very well camouflaged in the dark. So when I went to shine the torch, I could only see a little bit of his head and his neck area, which he didn't really have much of a neck. It was all covered in hair like a longer hair around the neck area. And um, 
up. And um, sorry, I just got a coffee. And then um, at the back of the tree was another set of glowing white eyes. And that's all you could see, but I didn't see any hands wrapped around the trunk of this tree. And it was only a small, skinny tree. So we were watching it, and its eyes dropped down. And then it crawled. And as it crawled, it stood up. And then it walked. <laughs> and that's when we shit ourselves. It would have been about my height. I'm nearly six foot. And as it walked, it walked in big, long strides. Head, head turned real quickly, like nearly robotic, but real quick and really quick direction. And it was very curious. Obviously, I thought later on of the torch because, it, you know, when you have a torch shining on something, you can't really see that person in the back. And um, and it was walking a big, long stride. It was leaning over a bit. It had really long arms, and that had an oblong-shaped head. So it, the oblong-shaped head was sideways, um, not like the Egyptian oblong head where it comes from the back of the head. It was like a football sideways. Yeah, I mean, we were talking just before... Um we started recording and we kind of joked around that the, the best way to describe that creature was kind of, yeah. it was like Stewie from Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like his head, but um, black and hairy. <laughs> and were all, yeah. were all those creatures, they all had the same, the same shaped head? Only the, um, well, I think that was the female because it was with the baby. And I think the one in the back was the only one that looked different because it was a lot taller, a lot bigger. And its hair was longer around the neck. You couldn't actually see the neck. But you could see the neck on the baby and the female. Right. You know, that's really not uncommon when it comes to a, a, a Yowie, I guess, encounter because a lot of people will say that they're, they're so big and they're so muscular that they, their neck just disappears because they've got nothing but shoulder muscles and traps that where a neck would normally be. Well, yeah, but the thing is I couldn't see his build i just knew he was huge i could only see part of his head and his neck um and that's it but i had a very good look at the female and the baby and i remember looking at their hands because it was a bit like you know a monkey's hand at the back where you could see you know like um like a dark brown skin at the back but this one had um long nails because i actually did focus on the hands because i was looking at the way i was walking i thought this is you know, at first I thought, you know, I thought someone was walking around the house. And I thought, what that, what, what's that? <laughs> you know? Um, and then we ran inside. I locked that door. I, I overlocked that door. I didn't even know if I even had locked it properly. And um, I grabbed a large um, chef knife from the kitchen. I said, right, get in the lounge. And I had my little... My little boy in the lounge, he's saying, Mum, what's going on? I said, oh, no, nothing. <laughs> and um, I said, just sit down. I put the knife underneath the uh, lounge because I didn't want my son to see what was going on. And then the next thing, um, you can hear a mmm noise. And they're walking at the back of the house where we just ran into. And then you heard one coming up the veranda which was had heavier footsteps, which was the same as what we've been hearing for months. And then I went up to the uh, sliding door of the lounge and I said to Laura, which was my niece, and I said, look, just keep talking as if, you know, everything's normal. So I just started making up stuff and just started talking. And I said, I don't think I locked the door. And I was talking and carrying on and I went up and there was only a curtain between you know, um, on the sliding door. Yeah. So whatever was coming on the veranda, I could not see. But I knew it was him. And um, I walked up and I went click and it wasn't locked. But I ended up locking it. And then I ran back into the lounge and I said, right, I said, if it comes smashing through this um, sliding door or through the front, I said, you run in there with, with Joshy, my son. And I said, you lock yourself in that bedroom because I'm going to have to do whatever I can to protect you. And um, then it walked away. So that's, that's absolutely terrifying, Jackie. We were absolutely terrified. Oh yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. imagine being in a situation like that. I mean, you've just seen a creature that people say don't exist, and not only did mm. you see one of them, you saw a family of them, and then they family of them, yeah. 
they approached you. Yeah, and they've been hanging around the property for quite a, some time. What, what, what was going so, through your head? Oh, lots of things. So, first of all, I was thinking about, um, well, at that time, I thought they were going to come through the into the house. I thought they might smash their way through the glass door or through the windows or just, um, I mean, kick down that door. I just didn't know. So I was more concerned of the safety of the kids and myself. So, um, but yeah, that was, yeah, very terrifying, especially for my niece. I mean, she was only 14 years old and I had her in my care for, um, you know, family reasons. So I was there to look after her and give her a better life. And she had to witness that. So she wasn't doing too well in school either. So she didn't really need to go through that. But, um, oh, she's all good now though, but yeah. But, um, so the next day, um, I took the kids down to the bus stop because I went to this nearby school and I come back and I went outside and I was thinking, all right, you're around here somewhere. <laughs> and I actually saw one and it was crawling on the forest line, just way at the back of the water tank. And, um, that was just the beginning of the next door name's property. And it was crawling, and its eyes were still going white. Really, even so during the daytime. So I knew it from the torch. Yep, even during the day. Wow. And I grabbed my phone, and I went to record it, and it just disappeared into the forest. And I went, like, "Oh, damn!" <laughs> <laughs> so I actually stood there, and I just quieted my mind, and I just said inside my head towards them, I said, "Look." You can help yourself to my home. Because I, I knew they were looking for rats and stuff like that. I used to hear them scuffling. And I started to work out what was going on. And I said, you can help yourself to my home. You can eat as many rats as you want. But do not harm my children and do not harm me. And I repeated it twice. Well, after I did that, that night... They became so active. They were on that roof and hang around that house and underneath that house two to three times per week. They were on your for roof? For the whole two months. Yeah, for the whole two months before I ended up leaving. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I had a 12-month lease. So when we saw them, I think it was on the pretty much the ninth, nearly 10th month of being there. And they were having a great time. You could hear them. They had, they had like a, this language where they chatted really quickly. It sounded like someone talking, but you couldn't make sense of it. But on fast forward. Yeah, it kind of sounds, so it sounds a little bit like chipmunk talk. Uh, sort of. Um, it sounded like more someone just talking and on full on fast forward, like, a, you know, like the old tape deck. And you yeah, fast yeah. Forward and you hear someone talking really, really quickly, but you couldn't understand what the hell they were talking about. And they would make a loud scream and... High pitched screams. They'd only growl during the time when we didn't, you know, before we actually saw them when they were hiding around the house, and and we'll just dart outside because we had to run into the toilet or something. And obviously, I found out that we were startling them, and that's why they were growling. But um, were they ever aggressive to you again? No, not after that. No, no, they were constantly hanging around the back water tanks. I found out they were actually climbing the back of the water tanks along the pipeline and onto the roof. Really? So you'd hear this scratching in the gutters. You could hear the, the sharp claws. And then you'd hear this scream and then you hear a whack. And so obviously they were grabbing the rats and they were breaking their necks on the roof by giving them a whack. And then you'd hear them crawl around and then get into the gutters again and make their way around the whole house. And then... Yeah, so, and then you'd hear them go back down the water pipe and onto the tank, and you could hear them actually quite happy, their little happy language. <laughs> and then off they go again. And then they'll come back again, and yeah, they became quite active. It's, it's simply amazing, Jackie. I mean, to, to go from something that was such a, a terrifying encounter to something that's almost part of the furniture for those last couple of months, what, what were you thinking when this was all going on? I'm just thinking, what what do they want? Because, not what are they doing here? My niece even said, there's something about you, Annie Jack. And I said, yeah, I think I'm starting to figure that one out. Because there was, I figured that they were more observing me 
And they're also hanging around the property because their source of food was to eat those rats. And um, and then, so I decided <laughs> when I calmed down a little bit, because I knew they weren't doing any more harm, they were just jumping on the roof. And that was the most terrifying sound to hear at night when you're watching TV with your kids, listening to them on the roof. So I was hoping they weren't going to get in the roof and come inside, you know. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, so I ended up putting some fruit outside <laughs> on one of the the paddock posts and they didn't eat that. Then we put the meat out there and they didn't eat that. So um, obviously they don't eat cow. <laughs> they don't eat anything else like that. They just must just like rats. And then the next morning, I found a um, two macadamia nuts at my back door, yeah, right where the mat was, and I picked them up because I actually nearly, I stood outside to go shopping and I nearly rolled on it because I had my shoes on and that's how I found them. And I picked them up and I thought, what are these doing here? How could they even get there? Because I had part of the roof at the back of the house that went to the bathroom. And um, anyway, so I just threw them away. And then the next morning, I found a dead rat, like a cat left at the, at the, in the same spot at the back door in front of the mat. So they're and living in gifts. Yeah. And then the third day, I threw that one. <laughs> and then the third day, I found this um flower that was in perfect condition that had been picked from, I don't know, somewhere. Um, it was a colour of pink and purple, but it was a colour of pink and purple I've never seen before. And it had like a like a metallic shine, sort of glitter to it. And I remember looking at it thinking, wow, this is a very beautiful flower. And it was in perfect condition. And so I walked around the whole property trying to think, where did this come from? And I couldn't find anything. I mean, we only had hibiscus flowers on the property and, and some other plant, and I didn't even know what that was. But it wasn't from there. And it wasn't until later on when I moved out of the house because I kept thinking about what was happening. They were trying to show me what they eat, but also pretty much saying, I thank you, and I think that's what that flower was. Far out. What, what an, an amazing experience that you've had there. Um, yeah. Did you yeah, ever... Yeah, different. In, yeah, oh. It's it's far more than different. It's <laughs> it's incredible. It's um, there's there's not really many words to, that can kind of cover what's what I'm thinking here. But um, mm. the, uh, the 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 almost demonic creature that you saw out in the paddock did that ever yeah. return after your? Yes, your... that used to hang with them. Yeah, because it, really? um, yes, in the back, and I think that was the one that was climbing on the roof. Really. Um. Yeah, because if the others, if the, like, I'm just, I'm just, like, trying to sort of work it out myself. I mean, if the female was nearly six foot, I mean, I don't think she could really climb that pipeline from the water tank to the roof without breaking it. She'd be too heavy. And I, definitely the male wouldn't. And when I did see him in the paddock, he just did not move. So obviously he was protecting and keeping an eye on me, but also, like, like protecting the female and the baby, obviously. He did not move at all. So he definitely wouldn't have been able to climb up on that water tank and onto the roof because he was quite large. So, and I could hear that creature up there. And um, and he he had a, a, a different language as well. He had more of a, a another sort of high-pitched scream um, yeah, you could just tell because his, his language is different from the others. Um, but one day I said to my niece, um, I said, I'm going to park the car right at the back of the house and I'm going to unlock it. And I said, if we hear them on the roof, I want you, I said, when I say now, we're going to slowly walk to the back door. And when I say go, I want you to run in there with Josh. I'll be right behind you. Throw yourself in the back seat of the car. I said, because then I'm going to drive around the property and you grab my phone and you video it. 
and I was prepared to sleep in the car with the kids that night. So I had everything packed in the car, and I was just waiting for the night for them to jump on that roof. So one night, you could hear them, and I looked at my niece, and I nodded, and she goes, okay. So we got up, and I said to my little one, I said, just be quiet, darling. I'm just going to go in the car, but you have to be really quiet. And um, so we were... You know, hand in hand, slowly walking one step at a time towards the back door. And as we did, the creature on the roof is walking with us. Oh, no. And as we got to the back door, we stopped. And it stopped. And I said, oh, shit. And I said, well, let's go back to the lounge and sit down. So we couldn't leave. So I learned they were very telepathic, obviously, because when I cried my mind and I said to them that day in the backyard, look, you know, you can help yourself to whatever it is that you want around home, but don't harm my children or me. They heard that quite clearly. And, but not only that, they could sense and obviously pick up on my thoughts and the kids, knowing what we were attempting to do. And it didn't want us to leave, you know. It, it obviously wanted to finish getting its meal and going at the back of the house. I th- I'm pretty sure they, they were staying at the lake at the back there because of that track that the land was found. Wow. It's, uh, that's, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, did you, did you feel like you were trapped there? Did you feel like you were yes, in danger? Yes, definitely. Yep. Oh, no, I didn't feel like I was in danger in the end. At the beginning, I did. Um, when I first saw them, um, that night, I, I rang up my mother. I actually rang up one of the neighbours. Did your neighbours ever didn't. have encounters with these creatures? No, no. Um, so they were they were singling you out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. And um, I actually rang up the, the army and I rang up the navy. And um, they actually hung up on me. And I said, look, this might be a bit bizarre story if I'm telling the truth. I said, I'm a single mum. I'm on a large property. And in Carzelli, I said, I've got some creatures in the backyard and they're not from here, mate. I said, you've got to get here now. And um, I just said, sorry, we can't help you. And I hung up. So what do you think these creatures were? They were definitely um, yes, um, multidimensional beings, especially the other creature because he had a very dense energy. Um, around him. It was like you could nearly walk through him, but you, you couldn't see through him. He didn't have a solid form, kind of like what the the other creatures did? No, he wasn't completely solid, no. He had like a blur around him, like, a, like an energy around him. Yeah. It was black energy. Um, um, and I did forget to um, let you know that and, um, when that date came around again, um, I missed that part. Um, he turned up, and it was that night, and he came through the back door, and they were screaming and growling. I didn't like him being there. And he goes, oh, that's them, because he hadn't seen them. And I said, yeah. And uh, so it doesn't look like they really want you here. And they were making a very... They were really screaming and going right off. Making it well and, um Yeah, and I think they, they were at the back of the water tank. And um, I think they were pretty much pissed off because, you know, that, you know, like he was interrupting them to get their feed. But like they usually would jump on the roof. And I mean, they weren't afraid of me. I allowed them to, but a known person that's just walking up every now and then. They didn't like that. So he wanted to go around the back. And I said, look, if you do that, if anything happens to you, I said, I, I'm not going to be able to help you. I'm going to have to lock this door. So he grabs my security torch and off he goes. And he walks around the back. And they scream so loud. And I'm just standing at the back door ready to lock it. And one of them screamed so loud, and he was nearly at the back of the bathroom, that one, you could hear it screaming all the way down the back of the hill to the lake. And that was a good 800 metres at the back of the house. 
and you could hear the scream starting to fade from the distance. You could, and but you couldn't hear it running through the grass. You couldn't hear anything. Only it's screaming. And then he went further around the back, and the next thing, it flew back. I don't know how. Within two seconds, it was flat. It was at the back of the house, really? and you could hear it screaming from the back, from the bottom of the lake, straight back. And that's when he ran inside and he was like frantic. He's like, what the hell is this? I said, did you see it? He goes, no. I said, oh, no. And um, he said, it's like it just transported at the back. I said, well, that's exactly what I heard because that's what I thought because I didn't hear it running through the grass. And I said, I didn't hear any wings flapping or, you know. And um, I actually thought it was that other creature. Not the actual yow is doing that. Right. And because um, I could tell by his high pitched scream, because his was a little bit different to the others. And he goes, Oh, something's not right. And I said, Well, I told you. Anyway, he calmed down for a little bit. And he just went at the back door to have a cigarette. So I was making my home. And, but he was still a little shaken up because I wouldn't go any further at the back door, you see. <laughs> Because it was locked down. At not, um, as soon as it was gone dark, I would lock everything. I mean, I even had the kids pee in a bucket in the pantry. We weren't going outside to the toilet at all I, when I it was night time. Do not blame you on that at all. Yeah. <laughs> and he's out there having a the smoke and he's like constantly talking about it. He's like, oh, I can't believe this. And then the next thing, it hammers down with rain out of nowhere. And it... You could just, it just came out of nowhere, and but it wasn't raining. And he goes, where did that rain come from? I said, you know how I told you about that rain? But it's not raining? He goes, yeah. I said, go, go to outside. So he steps out there, puts his hands up in the air. He goes, what the hell? And he runs inside. And I quickly lock the door. And he goes, but you can hear it dripping. I said, I know. You can actually hear it dripping from the gutters. You can hear the rain hitting the roof, but there's no rain. It's really interesting. It, it, it makes me think that that... Have you ever heard of um, infrasound, Jackie? Um, oh, a little bit of that, yeah. Maybe just do a little bit of research around it, because that might answer a couple of your questions. But essentially, it's um, it's a theory that uh, Yowies and Bigfoot have this ability to kind of put out this, this frequency that can really disillusion you. And... This just might be the effect from from being exposed to infrasound. Well, what happened after that, this is, you're going to find this one quite interesting, is that we decided to sit in the lounge and we had everything locked. And um, he was still talking about it. Like he, he just couldn't believe what was going on. And um, the next thing, there was this, you know, I'm very quite sensitive and... Um, you know, there was, I could feel this energy in the home. And I looked at my hand, and it was like my fingers were getting longer. And I said, what the hell's going on with my hand? And I showed him, he goes, what? And I actually videoed him. And I said, show me your hand. And his hands did the same. So I called out to my niece. I said, come look at this. And she comes out of the bedroom. And she goes, what the hell's going on with your hand, honey, Jack? And I said, I don't know. And it was like the energy was, it was like um, some type of dimension was in the home. The energy was different. And it was sort of changing um, part of our physical appearance. Not not our face, we didn't really even bother looking at each other. It was more just concentrating on the hand. I mean, why would your fingers stretch out long and thin like that? <laughs> and I, I think it's strange just even talking about it, but that's exactly <laughs> what happened. And um, he's like, oh, something, this is just, you know, unbelievable. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And um, there was another time, actually I forgot to add that into the story too, because it's such a long story, I've got to try and remember everything. I was sitting in the lounge room one, one night with my young son, my niece has always been in her bedroom doing her thing on Facebook or whatever she does. <clears throat> and he goes, Mom, what's that noise? And I was really already listening to this noise. And it sounded like um, a truck idling. 
And I said, just shush for that, darling. Because I was listening. And, yeah, it sounded like a, a truck idling, but with a, uh, like a swirling noise. And you could hear it in the house, but above the roof. And you hear this, like a, like a swirling, moving noise with the vibration of a small truck. And I'm listening to it. And I thought, oh, I know what's going on here. So I went out the window and I looked up the roof, but I couldn't see anything. And then I went out to the, just looked through the veranda um, sliding door and there was no one there. There was no truck or car or anything. And um, so something was above that roof. That's incredible. And This house I is think an something, absolute hotspot. Yeah, I think something was observing. I was definitely observing us. And um, and I think the the strange rain phenomenon. I think because sometimes they would disappear for a week and then all of a sudden they come back. And during that strange rain phenomenon, I noticed that when they obviously they must have left. And then because when I saw that strange rain phenomenon again, it's when they appeared again. So it's it's like there was some type of portal or something that they were entering and exiting they weren't just living in the backyard how fascinating jackie that's uh it's because the energy in the house changed and you know like and the clock would tick and there was never a battery i've never even used the clock it doesn't even work and my date said you know do you have a clock and I, all of a sudden you could hear it ticking and i said well i've got one on the wall but it's never worked and um it was a nice wooden clock it was from the danger and mum said, you know, it looked nice on your wall. And I said, well, it doesn't work, mum, you know. But anyway, so I chucked it on the wall. And I went up to it and grabbed it and I turned it around and I showed you know, that guy I was on a date with and he goes, oh, no. <laughs> so I actually had a little fire outside, so I threw in that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I think, and then we did try to video camera, um, like try to um, record it. I tried my niece's phone. She had a brand new iPhone. Um, it would record for 15 minutes and then go black. I keep recording all night, but the screen would go pitch black. How intriguing. Um, and then I did it with my phone. I had a brand new, that's when that new Samsung 7 Edge came out. And so I set mine up in the same spot in the kitchen because it was directly towards that tree and I had a, you know, that um, sensor security light. Um, in the back, and um, that did exactly the same. It recorded for 15 minutes, and then it went black. But it recorded all night, and then um, the day that I was, the guy I was dating, he brought his big flash video camera around, and did exactly the same thing. Wow. So now I can understand why people can't take photos. Yeah, absolutely. Or video them, because they know how to... To disable them. Yeah, that's right. Well, Jackie... Your story is absolutely amazing. It has sent so many chills up my spine. Um, it's uh, I, I, Honestly, I don't know how you lived in that house for so long with all that going on, and I just really want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing your story with me and, and all the listeners. No worries. Thank you very much for having me. And that's going to do it for tonight. And remember, if you have had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au or you can message me on Facebook and that's facebook.com forward slash believe UFO radio. Until next time, stay safe and you've been listening to Believe Australian Paranormal and UFO Radio.